All right, we've defined non-binary, and now we're, we're going to ask, what is transition? Because that's the second word in the title of the workshop. So here are a few words that capture the sentiment of transition, because in reality, like gender, it's a little bit indescribable. But let's give it a shot. I like to think of gender as having two components. You have your public gender, which is what everyone sees. It's how everyone perceives you. And it's a social gender. It extends beyond yourself. And then there's the private gender, which is an inner identity, an inner experience that is indescribable, abstract. You just know it. It's fuzzy. It's unclear. And nobody else can feel or know this except you. So I want to do a quick exercise to kind of illustrate these concepts. How many of you have worn an outfit and you go out and everybody tells you, oh, you look great, you look amazing, and you just, you're just not feeling it. You don't feel great. What, what do you feel like doing when that happens? You want to go home and change. That's right. You obsess. You can't stop thinking about it. Because no matter how great others say you look, you're just not feeling right. You want to fix this internal discomfort because you not only want to look good to others, but you want to look good to yourself. You want to feel good in yourself. And that's a very small taste of what dysphoria is like. It's a mismatch between what others see and what you feel. And it can be quite unsettling, can lead to anxiety and depression. And as you saw in the exercise, it doesn't have to be about your body parts. It can be about a lot of other things, like how other people see you, or your clothing, or what restroom you're in. So what is transition? Transition is about aligning this internal feeling with what others see, so that they're as close as possible. It's about finding comfort. So now you went home, you changed your outfit, and transition is about being able to put on that gender outfit every day and not having to worry about it and not having to obsess about it and not having to feel like you want to change it. You just put on your clothes and you go out and you live your life. But what about non-binary transition? What is so unique about non-binary transition from what we typically know of transition, of you know, trans man, trans woman. Because in typical transition, the way it's understood is that if you're born assigned female, you transition to male. If you're born assigned male, you transition to female. But what does a non-binary person transition to? Our public gender does not exist. In forms, in fitting rooms, in bathrooms, in clothing stores, in vitamins? Have you ever tried to buy vitamins that are not for men or for women or for kids under 12? It is hard. Nobody is going to see me and know how I identify. Do you, do you know what my gender is? Does anyone know? It's impossible. So that presents a unique challenge for non-binary transition because public, non-binary public gender does not exist in society. And no matter how much a non-binary person transitions, they'll never be able to completely be affirmed in their gender during every part of their day. There's always going to be some part that's missing. There's always going to be some compromise. So what's the point to try to transition at all? Why should I bother? because we can try to get very close to comfortable. It might not be perfect, but it'll be good enough, and sometimes more than good enough. And there are steps that we can take to bring us peace and reduce the dysphoria and take us into alignment. So I want you to take a minute and think about what does transition look like for a non-binary person? Try to write down a thought and how how does it differ from what we think of as typical transition? And as you do this, I'm, I'm going to quiz some of you. 
What's the first step in transition? Coming out to yourself. Coming out to yourself. Self-awareness and acceptance. Self-awareness. Letting go. Letting go. Letting go of the external constraints. I mean, the question of what is gender. The question of what is gender. Do you think someone could, could change their clothes without being self-aware of what they're doing, necessarily? No? I think so. Yeah, you see little kids, they just wear what they want to wear. They're not aware of their gender. So... I want to imagine that we're baking chocolate chip cookies. And this is the fun part of the presentation, because you're all going to be very hungry after this. It seems pretty straightforward to bake chocolate chip cookies. I mean, I've done it. How many of you have done it? We've all baked chocolate chip cookies, right? There are a lot of parts. There's dry ingredients, wet ingredients, toppings, leavening, sweeteners, spices. Each part is separate. It influences each other, it might conflict with one another, and it's of different importance to each individual. But baking cookies is more than just the ingredients. There's the kitchen counter, the rolling pin, the measuring cup, the oven, the chef, the chef's helpers. There's a lot of other stuff going on around baking the cookies. Transition, just like cookies, is holistic and multifaceted. It's an emotional journey. Every decision is a process, and the process is often invisible. And it extends beyond the individual to relationships and family and community. And lastly, transition can happen in any order. You can measure out all your ingredients and lay them out, or you can start dumping them into a bowl. It's a process. There's more to just baking cookies, then mixing the batter and putting in some chocolate chips. There's exploration. So are you making chocolate chip cookies or peanut butter? You have to pick between thousands of recipes and it's lots of tiny decisions. Even after we've picked the recipe, we're grocery shopping for ingredients. Do we get the milk chocolate chips, the dark chocolate chips, the semi-sweet chocolate chips, the organic semi-sweet chocolate chips, the 69% cacao semi-sweet chocolate chips. What's the difference between all of these? And let's not forget the milk and the butter. And was it shortening or oil? It can get overwhelming very fast. There are a lot of decisions and a lot of tinier decisions behind those decisions. And most of it is trial and error. How do you know you're gonna like the cookies? Maybe you've made this recipe before. Maybe you've made a similar one. Maybe you've tried this kind of cookie. Why not make a new flavor? How do you know you're gonna like it? Maybe it tastes terrible. Maybe you're so addicted that this is the only cookie you'll ever wanna bake ever again. So at best, what you're making is an educated guess and you're courageously moving forward with your decision, just like with transition. There's also growth. How will the cookies taste? How many should you make? What's the ideal oven temperature? Unless you've tried every single ingredient in every possible combination, it's impossible to know. So you don't know what you don't know. And it's hard to imagine yourself 50 steps in the future when you haven't taken the first two. Growth means that as you learn new information, you're better able to make decisions in the future. But even if there are common elements, like steps and ingredients, it's wrong to assume that there's a set sequence or formula, even with cookies or with transition. The process is more than just the recipe. <clears throat> so someone said coming out is the first step, and that may be. Someone may come out and be unsure about how they're going to transition physically. On the other hand, some people may have surgery without telling anyone. They don't really come out to people. They can put on an outfit and not really have self-awareness about their gender. There's no formula. Uh, there's just 
a lot of elements and a lot of components, and they all come about in different order. What kind of cookie you end up baking depends not just on the ingredients, but the proportion of the ingredient, the type of ingredient, the baking order, how hard you mix the batter. And so the particular gender you end up with also depends on the ingredients you put in your transition. You're going to end up with a very individualized transition depending on the individual ingredients you put in and how you take those into account. Transition is essentially a buffet of options. Some are like a base layer, universal. You got your butter, your milk, your sugar, you know. Others are just like flavored toppings. You can have one or two or 50 or none or all of them in infinite combinations. The end result is a personalized version of gender. It's important to remember that it's not all or nothing. You can bake 500 dozens of cookies or you can bake one one minute single serving cookie. And this is extremely important for non-binary people because you don't necessarily have to buy the whole package to take any one step. Each step is independent. And a little secret, this actually applies to anyone transitioning. Time is the most essential ingredient. Sometimes you feel like you don't have enough of it. You need more time to think, more time to process, more time to research. And sometimes there's too much. You want the change to have happened yesterday. So a lot of stuff happens in this magical cooking time period. It's a process, and there's a lot of processing. Emotionally and mentally making sense of information, integrating it back into the self, it's all a cycle. And sometimes you have to let a particular step or decision kind of cook a little while longer before it's ready. But are you sure you want to bake cookies? I mean, we could make cupcakes, or muffins, or granola bars. Transition is a tumultuous period because there's lots of uncertainty about even where to begin, how to proceed, what the options are, what the right options are, what we should even be considering at all. So it's important to step, take a step back and evaluate what's driving all of these decisions and go back to the roots and reasons for seeking transition. So I get a lot of emails from many different people who read my blog or see me at a conference or want my autograph. And they always ask me, should I do this? Should I do that? I don't know. And I always ask them, well, what do you want? What's your goal? Because behind every step, there's a reason to take it. So I want to pack up our cookies, put them in a Ziploc, and we're going to head out on a trip. Where are we going? And why? Everybody has transition goals, and they are unique, as varied as gender. And as we've seen, gender is very varied. They can be uncertain, because as non-binary people, our public gender does not exist, which makes it very difficult to imagine what we'll look like, what we want to look like. So it's normal to have no idea what your final destination is going to be. And sometimes, all the options are pretty shitty. There, you have to choose among unideal option number one, unideal option number two, and terrible option number three. So you're basically left choosing the least worst option. It can be confusing to figure out how your gender fits into a world where it's continually telling you it doesn't exist. And confusion hurts self-confidence and also leads to indecision. So a lot of times, there's hesitation in the process. And hesitation doesn't necessarily mean that the person is confused about themselves, just about how they fit into the world. And it also doesn't mean that they shouldn't pursue whatever step they want to pursue. And as we said, growth. Transition is dynamic. It's not static. Each new piece is a new discovery. Uh, once there's probably a lot of things that you haven't discovered yet, so you can't make a decision on them yet. As you learn new information, it'll change what the next steps will be. So your goals change along with you. Getting used to change is also a process. You know, once you're used to something, like wearing a dress or being an adult, it seems easier to do other things, like wearing heels 
or paying the bills. And sometimes you never get used to it, but you just kind of do it. I'm not necessarily going from point A to point B. All I know is I left point A. I think this will resonate with a lot of non-binary people. We're sure of what we're not, but we're not sure of what we are. And the journey is different because we don't have a clear destination. But not having a clear destination doesn't mean we can't address the discomfort. You can prepare for an unknown destination. Think of our trip. We don't know where we're going to end up, but we probably know we'll need a few essentials, like a backpack, clean underwear, a toothbrush, our chocolate chip cookies, in case we get hungry, and maybe a teddy bear. A map can only tell you where you are, but not where you're going. Is it a stepping stone or a destination? This is like a top FAQ. I get asked this all the time. Is non-binary just a temporary layover on my way to being a trans man or a trans woman? Sometimes it is. And sometimes it's not. Sometimes non-binary is the destination. There's no way to know beforehand what the final destination will, will be. So we have to honor what we feel in this moment. If right now you have a non-binary gender, you are non-binary. Even if it means that later in the future, you're going to identify as a trans man. And it's important to remember because it's, it's a, sometimes, usually, irrelevant to whatever steps you're taking because you're doing what you need to do right now to address the discomfort you're feeling right now. If you later discover that there's more to travel, you pack up and you keep walking. Sometimes different people will arrive at what seems to be the same place, but they took wildly different paths to get there. Because the way they got there was unique. Personalized goals, expectations, motivations, different steps, different timeline. So in general, when we talk about non-binary transition, a lot of the nitty-gritty details are the same as any other typical binary transition. You know, buying clothes, coming out, surgery, <laughs> hormones. Two people might even look physically the same on the, on the surface. You can have a non-binary transmasculine person and a trans man. And you will not know how either of them identifies because they'll look the same. But the mental and emotional processes for these two individuals are different because their starting point is different and their identity is different. And the identity shapes the journey. So a non-binary person will sometimes have a very different journey than a binary person. And lastly, there's no right or wrong way to be trans, or to transition, or to travel, or to bake cookies. And I can't stress this enough to providers, to non-binary people, to allies, to anyone. Each individual has a unique gender with unique goals and a unique approach to transition. And there are conventions and commonalities, but ultimately it's a very personal journey. And I know you guys are all very enlightened providers, but I, you've probably heard some brutal horror stories from a lot of other providers who try to dictate what transition is and what it should look like. So I want to talk about you now, a uh, little discussion. What should your goals be in helping your patient or your client? I think, first of all, you have to understand, have them understand their own goals. How whatever it is they're doing fits into their unique gender puzzle and understand the compromises that they have to take to, to get to where they're going. Sometimes the options are unideal, like we said. And a lot of it is just working with uncertainty. It's a process with lots of fear, lots of anxiety, and no clear answers. And because you are the providers, I want to ask you what some of your goals are. Not to give them labels they don't want. Not to give them labels they don't want. Hold the space for them. To hold the space for them. Safety. Timely access to care. Timely access to care. To really work on not making assumptions about the person. Not making assumptions, absolutely. I think you should really think about what your goals are as a provider throughout this workshop and, and the conference, too. 
All right. Before we move on, um, are there any questions? Comments? Enthusiastic remarks? Are you still awake? All right. I know it's long. There's a lot of content. But I want you to know that even if you don't you know, remember everything, the main ideas are what's important.